You're listening to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast, celebrating hunting dog heritage, competition, and community. United Kennel Club has been the hunting dog sports home for coon hounds, beagles, retrievers, pointers, cur feist, and more for over 125 years. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast. I'm Trevor Wade. I'll be your host today, Coon Hound Program Manager here at UKC, and I'm joined by Alan Gingrich, the Director of Hunting Ops. How's it going, Alan? Doing very well. How about you? Good, good. Just uh, just completed the last breed day event for the years. Yeah, you know, plot days for a long time used to be in the month of August, so that was always the last one for us, but they changed the date here in the last couple of years or whatever. So yeah, they wrapped it up here this last weekend for you. That's right. Yeah, they had a they had a good plot days event. Uh, they was over in a uh, Florida, Illinois this year. That uh, makes what? Three times you were in Florida this year? Twice. Only twice, twice this year. Next year it'll be three times. Next time's three yeah. years, yeah. yeah. But uh, they had two weekends in a row here, uh, English days and plot days, but uh, that club's just so efficient. It's like a well oiled machine. We talk about that all the time, but they've, they've got it down pat and the, the plot association as well. They've, and it probably didn't even affect them to have a back-to-back major event like there at the club. You probably didn't even notice, did you? No. They, yeah. Yeah, and they... I mean, obviously they're they are a little weary after a couple of weekends and no sleep <laughs> yeah. and doing work on the side. Yeah, you know, I'm sure. it, a lot of people don't think about about that because they take time off to go to some of these events. But those local guys, they're having to work through it, and they do, and they have a good days. they do have a good support uh, system around them there with some of the surrounding satellite clubs and in, in the area, and, and always have. Yeah. The plot breed's always interesting to me, just because we talk about it all the time. It's uh, when you talk about our coonhound breeds, it's. Uh, probably the most versatile when you talk about uh, how how much they're used for in other capacities. Even on their banners and everything, you'll see coon, cat, bear, and boar. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're used in a variety of different ways all over the country. Um, and that versatility kind of comes into play here at the event because it's it's the longest days at breed days for sure. They have something going from the, when the sun comes up to well into the night, 2 or 3 a.m., and uh, there's always something going on there. There is, and they've always got a big table full of trophies and plaques, too. You know, I always yeah. thought, you know, if you have a plot and you go to plot days and you don't win something, some kind of a plaque, <laughs> right. I, uh, that kind of speaks a whole lot for the dog you <laughs> took, you know. But uh, right. they have so many different events, yeah. you know, just yeah. a lot of different ones. and talked about the versatility you know of all the other breed uh, breed day events or whatever the plots are probably obviously uh, they just have a lot more events than everybody else you know the red bones have the field trials water races but then uh, plot days here comes plot days and they'll have that as well but they'll have their oftentimes they have the roll cage contests uh tree sometimes contest. they have treeing contests sometimes bear bays and things like that just there's constantly there's activities going on all day all weekend right yeah, trying to keep up and typing up results, and it seems like every ten minutes there's another sheet of paper on my computer with some more results. Yeah, and they a, do stuff with coon scent, they do stuff with bear scent. Yeah. It's a whole host of different things. And a good group of good group of folks behind yeah. all those that plot association and their membership. Yeah, well, we got a, got a chance to sit down uh, with some a couple other officers. So prefacing that a little bit, we're going to play that interview in a minute with a couple of our club officers. But before we get there, let's talk a little bit about the big winners of the weekend. Uh, we'll start out with their their biggest award and kind of uh, what all plot fanciers shoot for, and that's that Isaiah, Isaiah Kidd Overall Night Hunt Winner Award. And this year it went to uh, a fella down in Louisiana, Charlie Border Jr., with his hound water champion, Cy- uh, PR Cypress River Clyde Two. Yeah, uh, just an open register dog, too, so... Yeah, and if you look through the results of plot days, you'll see Clyde too a, new, a number of times in the field trial competing, in the water race competing, and a lot of times, you know, those dogs after they're running all day out there in the heat, you know, you think they may not do so well at night, but he ended up coming in with triple cast wins this weekend. Yeah, how about that? You know, not just a coon hound here; he competes in all those other events, you know, different events like that. So yeah, you know, you know, Charlie is a it's he's a that's a name that I've seen, but I don't really know him personally or whatever. But coming up from Louisiana, it seems like the last several events there at uh, at Flora, people come from out of state and do well in Flora. Yeah, don't absolutely. have to be from Illinois to have much of an advantage there. It seems like. Yeah. After a couple of our last ones, I wanted to jot down a squid. Just uh, oh, uh, Clyde here seemed like he got uh, stronger as the weekend went on. A hundred plus on Thursday in the all plot hunt. 325 on Friday night and then finished it off with a bang on Saturday night with 650 plus. Oh, yeah. Great weekend for Clyde. Yeah, heck yeah. Three cast wins. Our uh, Isaiah Kid opposite sex night hunt winner is uh, night champion, champion PR Pride Sally. It's a plot female owned by Floyd Ledman right there close to Flora. Uh, he's a, I think he's the vice president of the Flora Club, actually. And uh, 
he got this club just recent or this dog just recently from Montana Buffington, who was handling the dog this weekend to triple cast wins. Yeah, Montana's a younger guy. He's probably in his early twenties now, I'd say, but he came kind of came up through the. He was a young guy when I first saw uh, him competing at plot days with a uh, one of those pride dogs, uh, Pride's Copper, I think it was right. a dog owned by Joe Pride. It's kind of where he got his start, so it'd be the daddy to this dog right here, I think. And, that's uh, that's right. Copper's the sire of of Sally, and and just to mention Copper, I made a note here. Copper won this twice, so kind oh, of yeah. just yeah. following or this uh, Sally's following in her sire's footsteps here. Yeah, and uh, here again, three cast wins. I think I saw him posted on his Facebook page over the weekend. So good, another great weekend for uh, Montana, and it, that kid hunts hard. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, let's move over to the show side of it. Uh, you know, uh, plots do well nationally, and their plot days is always. Just a great competitive bench show. A lot of top quality dogs there. And uh, coming out on top this year as the king of show is, was just a registered dog, uh, PR County Line Truman. It's a plot male owned by Christina Officer and Chelsea Bailey of Kentucky. And Christina was handling it. Yeah, Christina, ever since I've been involved in coon hounds, Christina has been at shows with plots. And she's always had some super nice ones um, uh, going, going way back, you know, 30 years ago. And and I think a lot of these dogs that she still has today are that same strain of dogs. And I saw a picture of this one, and I even mentioned something to you. That is a nice-looking hound. And just in the registered class here, but here, you know, what was the last one? She had legs that she did yeah. so much winning with, and now uh, she's always got a good one. And this this one just looks – I don't know how you keep getting – as good or better, you know, <laughs> but she Speaks seems to – Speaks to her uh, breeding program yeah, a little bit, she I guess. Seems to, she seems to uh, – Bring out some really good ones year after year after year. Yeah, uh, we met, we talked about Truman a little bit. He's still young yet. I think he was showing as a junior there, so probably hasn't even uh, filled out all the way yet. Probably has yeah. a ways to go till he hits his uh, full potential. So it could be one to keep an eye on. Yeah, if, picture, if the picture was uh, you know anything there, why well, I'd say this won't be the last win that dog gets. Right. Um, and the queen of show was Grand Champion PR Midnight Brindled Burning Flame, a plot female owned by Katie and Jason Woodward in Virginia. Yeah, Katie always shows nice plot hounds, and the brindled, uh, the brindled name there, and the dog's name, Brindled Burning. I'm assuming Midnight Brindled. I'm assuming that's probably something from Scott and Connie that's Hogan's great. breeding up there, you know. So yeah, congratulations to Katie, yeah. Jason. This second year in a row, Katie's won uh, Queen of Show with it, and this time with a different dog. So uh, she's. Uh, She's doing really well uh, for herself as well. And the last uh, winner we'll mention real quick before we get to the interviews was our, uh, they actually start, get started up on Wednesday night at Plot Days with their uh, youth hunt. They call it the Art Gage Memorial uh, Youth Hunt. And the overall winner this year was local kid Blake Frederick handling Grand Night Champion Mojo Danger. It's a tree and walker owned by Ike Rainey, Malcolm Rains, and Tuck Lundy. Um, obviously, Randy and those guys are from Florida, so that's yeah. where it shows the dogs from. Yeah, Blake is Paul's little brother. Paul Frederick used to work up here. Yeah. Did your job there, my job, and your job there. The Kuhn Home Programs Manager for uh, for several years, but uh, at that time, Blake was just he was just a little eight nine year old kid at that time. But yeah. I don't know how old he is now. It's been a good little while, but yeah, actually, it looks like he it look. He, According to the owners, looks like he might be kind of a professional handler here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ike Rainey and those, but yeah. He, uh, Blake, he's, uh, he's got to be about to age out of the youth stuff, but, uh, to be as young as he is, he's a super respectful kid and he's always put in hard work there around, yeah. around the club. Yeah. Um, it just, he, he does what he has to do. He's just a, like any other active member of the club doing the work. He's in the mm-hmm. kitchen. He's guiding casts when he has to, he's doing what, everything he has to do. So he grew up with all that yeah. stuff. You just know, he, second it, nature. Huh? Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, well, Hey, we talked about the interviews a little bit, uh, you know, we've we've been using this platform for the past couple months to talk to associations and letting them tell a little bit about their association. Uh, so if you're a plot fancier at all, uh, this is going to tell you a little bit about National Plot Hound Association, the ins and outs of it. I was able to talk to their current president, Andy Anderson, and uh, also one of their past presidents and current board of director member, and that's Gary Cox. Yeah, both of them has been staples in the plot association for a lot of years. Yeah, so enjoy this interview with Eddie and Gary. All right, guys, I'm sitting here on Saturday in Flora, Illinois, with uh, a couple members of the National Plot Hound Association. Can you introduce yourself? We'll start with Eddie here. Eddie? Eddie Anderson from Central City, Kentucky. Yeah, Eddie, and in what capacity are you here for the uh, NPHA? You're the president, is that right? I'm president right now. Yeah. And how did you get involved in, in plot hounds and ultimately in the association? Well, it was kind of an accident, and uh, 
and I ended up moving up here closer to a plot days after I acquired a plot dog that I thought was kind of special. And then once I started going, I was kind of hooked. I ain't hardly missed one since. Yeah. And you came on as president last year. Had you been yes, uh, affiliated with being a board member or anything yeah, before that? I've been on there two or three times as a board member. Yeah. Okay. Gary, um, can, you, yes. can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved in, with plot dogs? Well, I'm Gary Cox. I'm current director. I'm past president a couple of times. And I got involved back in the 70s, late 70s, early 80s. I, I coon hunted with Shelby Ballard. Everybody knows Shelby that's been around long. He's he's a retired coon hunter, and I just enjoy the plot association. Now I do very little hunting. I can't climb my mountains in western North Carolina where I live, uh, but I do have one old dog and still feed her and pat her on the head. Yeah, and you you said you're a past president, you, but you're uh, just a board director. Uh, I'm board only director. a board director, uh, a yeah. board member now, and I got one more year to serve on the board. And uh, I enjoy it. Yeah. My wife says, why do you do this? <laughs> but I enjoy it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, hey, so this we've, we've been using this platform to, to reach people who may not know about the National Plot Hound Association. And, uh, and for anybody out there hunting plots, that's their, their breed of choice. If I was interested in becoming a member of the National Plot Hound Association, how would I do that? Well, the best thing to do is get a hold of Miss Lucille Trombone. That'd be the best way to do that. And now we got a web page for the National Plot Hound and, uh, and Mr. Shane Eaton's handling it. And as time goes on, everybody's done finding out, and I ain't going to tell you I'm caught up. I'm still behind. But this plot page that they've started right there is something that we're looking to more and more. But you can get us on the Facebook. And, but this is a web page right here for the National Plot Hound Association. Yeah, so you guys have a, a Facebook page that's pretty active. You can get a lot of information on yes. there. And then you also have the website that it sounds like Shane, yeah. you talked about in the meeting, Shane yes. Eaton's kind of been heading that on and revamping it. That's an option too. Uh, also, you guys always have a presence at all the major events. You guys are Grand American, Winter Classic, Autumn yes. Oaks, and always take memberships there as well. Yes, we do. Yeah. So uh, let's let's talk a little bit about your yearbook. That's always a big a big part of a membership dues. Uh, with your membership, you, you get a free a yearbook comes with being a member. Yep, it'd be free. Our yeah. yearship. Our uh, membership's only $25 a year, and you'll get a nice book. And uh, as times go on, it seems like these books are almost outdated, but I still enjoy getting my book. I wear the pages out just like I do the Coonhound Bloodlines. Yeah, it was pretty pretty neat, uh, pretty neat in the uh, meeting today. Uh, there was a big donation from somebody to uh, give away a whole, uh, basically a whole lifetime of Plot Association yearbooks. Yeah. Went for like 350 bucks. Buford Bayless, which was real active back in the, uh, what, 15, 20 years ago. Yeah. He, he was president several times. Yeah. And everybody knew Buford. He came. He he worked on electricity, whatever needed to be done. At plot days, he was active and a real guy. Yeah. And he did pass away, and his wife had donated this stuff to us. Buford Bayless is his name. Very neat. Uh, one one. Thing that you guys do a little bit different than other breed associations most of them have sectionals but you guys do it a little bit different as you guys limit sectionals per state uh is that correct and kind of make them a big deal i remember yeah. i'm from southeast tennessee and i remember going down to birchwood and and bud ramsey and that club and having a whole whole slew of plots there can you tell us a little bit about how the sectionals work well all you have to do is lots of times it's just going to be a a regular coon hunt, UKC sanctioned event. And what we like to do is we've just kind of done like all the breed association does. We just put the plot dog on the platform. Yeah. And, the, but we have changed something. We have got, we have one sectional per state, but we have changed it a little bit and we have a plot state championship too. But all it is really is a sectional and gives our states the opportunity to have more than one section. Sure. And, uh, We've done that, and mostly what it's done is we're fellowship. We're about, it's about like a family reunion when sure. you come to plot days and all these things. It ain't just about the dogs. There's people here that we have come in contact with that we truly love, and then the hounds is a part of what we have. Absolutely. Well, I think the, the plots more than any other breed are synonymous with being kind of a multi-purpose hound, not just for coon hounds like we're seeing here this weekend. Uh, for the most part, but also used on a lot of big game. It's on all your uh, all your advertisement stuff: uh, bear, boar, cat, and coon. Um, and and in that same vague, uh, same 
uh, talking about that. You guys have big game nationals, which is kind of a secondary major event for you guys almost yes. right every year. You want to talk a little bit about big game nationals? Uh, Gerald Chandler and I are currently trying to run the big game nationals. In the, uh, we try to have it in in bear states, people sure. that where where there is bear hunting sure. going on, and uh, it's really something that we try we try to promote to help the big game hunters because we need them in their association need their involvement and we have really lost a lot of the big game hunters since they did away with us being able to play with a live bear and that that's nothing we we had any control over right. that's you know uh tree huggers you know whatever we we had no control right. over it now we're having to use a mechanical bear and it's just it's just not the same. Can't even use a real coon anymore. No, in you're some right. States. Yeah. yeah. Well, hey, let's let's shift and talk about plot days a little bit. Uh, the past few years, it's been here at the end of June. If it, if we weren't having to deal with COVID or tornadoes or everything else, you guys have had to fight over the past few years. But uh, uh, plot days, you guys have a little bit of something for everybody. You know, you mentioned the big game hounds. This weekend, you guys have water races, field trials. You got treeing contests. You got roll cage contest you got bench shows night hunts there's something for everybody here yeah. that's important to to the association it is the way we do things around here like that right there you know i'm primarily a coon hunter i like to coon hounds but if you don't come in here with a mind open when you come on the board and doing things and it's about the breed yeah. and when we come here it's about what others like to do besides what we like to do it's about the breed so we are really uh uh mr jim garris said it, we're plot promoters we yeah. love the breed yeah and and to have a full like yesterday, there was something going on from nine in the morning till the deadline at two or three a.m. Yeah, takes it takes a whole slew of active board yes. members and directors yes. and members to to put on all those events. Yes, but we're really lucky, and, and uh, I'm a new president right here, and we've got all these young people around here. If they wasn't stepping up and making this go, and it don't make no difference where you're at or when you've done it. It takes a group of people to other because you're always going to have people going in and out on the board and as officers and directors, that's going to be a learning. But these people being in behind you that's done done some of these things is about helping you out and carrying you on just like everyday life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, all right, so so plot day starts out with Wednesday night. You guys usually do a, a youth hunt on a Wednesday night that's been non-licensed for the past. You guys call it the Art Gage Memorial. Yes. Usually a good deal for the yes. kids. Yes, it's been, it really has been a good thing. I ain't going to say it ain't come with extra effort, but we are truly looking to make it a sanctioned event. Some of the, one of the mothers brought it to our thing, and it only makes sense if you're going to have a sanctioned event, is to, I'm going to have an event, it might as well be sanctioned if you can. We'd like to sanction some of our big game stuff. We just ain't figured out how to do it. Right. And we have tried to figure some things, but these children, if we don't push these children they're about our sport that we're going to have, and it's real important in our association. If we don't get some of our youth involved, we're worried about what we're going because it's changed so much yeah. in the last 15 years. Yeah. Well, I can – I can, and we're going to talk about this. We, we're going to talk about you guys licensing those, those youth events uh, and figuring out what day works best, whether it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, what have you. But uh, last week I was sitting in this same chair talking to the English Association, and they had a licensed youth event that ran – in conjunction with their adult event for the first time on Saturday night, and they had 33 in the show and 14 in the hunt. So, wow, uh, you can do pretty That's good with great. that. Yeah. So there's a there's there's room in the sport for that, and hopefully we get some more youngsters around here. We there's a, there's a lot of young guys running around here, young guys yeah. and gals running around here. They're having fun doing everything, and it's just another opportunity for them possibly. Um, so uh, let's talk about the big awards of the weekend, the Isaiah Kid Award. Um, and, and just talk about what that means to a, to a plot fancier. What does the Isaiah Kid Award mean to a plot fancier for somebody who may not know? To the hunt, to the hunt people. Yeah, that is the ultimate goal. Yeah. Uh, what what it is? It's high scoring each of the three nights, and we go with cast winners first, and then we go with points if there's two or three cast winners. So. It's it's the most prestigious night hunt award that NPHA offers. Yeah, yeah. And you said it counts all three nights. So you guys get started on Thursday night with your all plot stuff. You, yes. You guys have an RQE, but you also have just an all plot right. non licensed okay. hunt. And then on Friday, Saturday, it's open to all breeds. But obviously, the plots are the ones that we're focused on here at Plot Days. Right. 
Um, well, let's talk about the meeting a little bit. In the same vein as the Isaiah Kid Award, you guys, in your meeting, you guys give out more awards than any other association I go to by far, uh, recognizing uh, top handlers, talk, recognizing top dogs and all that sort of stuff. That, that's that been going on for forever, I guess. Forever that I know of. It, forever that I know of. Yeah. So I know it's been going on since 1979. Yeah, and you guys always give out a bunch of awards to different people. I think I might have been one of the few people who didn't get one in attendance this morning. <laughs> <laughs> you deserve one, Trevor. No, no, I'm just messing with you guys. But, hey, it's fun. You see, uh, uh, it's always humbling. To, I, I get to sit through a lot of those meets, and when I see guys get uh, lifetime achievements or see their dogs make Hall of Fame, or we saw a fellow make Hall of Fame out here this morning, uh, it's it's humbling to see a, a, a grown man or, or woman moved uh, emotionally just seeing a lifetime of of hard work and dedication to a breed get recognized in front of their peers that's a that's a special thing so. well I, I, I want to mention one more thing about the meeting because i just think it's so cool that you're not the only association that does an auction but man the stuff that you guys auctioned off this morning was was first class you guys want to talk about any of the Donations. So you guys must have raised a couple thousand dollars this morning, I guess, from the auction with twenty five hundred. Twenty five hundred. And uh, we've got we've got people here that loves us. We've got people that you can't even mention their name right there that loves our association and donations and doing things and these live auctions. And especially after the last couple of years, it's going to be a good time to get a little extra boost. And it's a way that we help pay for our dog boxes and stuff that we have at plot days. And it helps. Uh, one person just ain't doing it. It lets everybody be involved in trying to do something. There ain't no gift too little or too big to bring. And uh, just like Buford Bayless's wife sent them books, she also sent the, the, the sharpest little old wood carved dog and coon out there with a plot hound on it. Ain't no telling it would have been perfect for anybody's trophy room right there. It brought three or four hundred dollars. I don't know exactly. And some people would look at it, but now you as a houndsman and a plot person, and knowing the history that it come from Mr. Buford Bayless's house, it would really tick you, tickle you and make you have a desire to have it. And yeah. that's what happens with a lot of this stuff. And they get, and you'll get people buying this stuff, and they'll turn right around, donate it back, and say, do it again. Yep, <laughs> absolutely. So another cool thing that you guys did to raise some money for the association is you had a real slick, well, I guess I should mention this is the 70th anniversary of the MPHA, yes. is that right? Yeah, so you guys had a really nice rifle over there. Uh, you're selling raffle tickets on that was embroidered with the 70th anniversary. Let me tell you. Yeah. Eddie donated that rifle. Oh, okay. And I had engraved. Yeah. So it was all profit. Yeah. That's awesome. Going to the in, NPHA. Seemed like a lot of people were over, around that table all, all weekend buying tickets. Over $4,000. That's amazing. That uh, that is amazing. I'm glad to hear that. Well, hey, after after the meeting, I kind of sat through the meeting. You mentioned uh, you guys were thinking about doing some uh, sanctioned new stuff. There wasn't much other new stuff going on in the MPHA right now that I can think of. Is there? When you got a new president right there, you're just trying to get through that main meeting and hold it together. <laughs> <laughs> Was that a long two hours for you, Eddie? Well, I've been in a lot longer and a lot worse, <laughs> and I wasn't even the one trying to be the president. Eddie did a great job. Uh, I'll say that for. For his first time, he's been a director before. He knew kind of what was going on, but he's never. We've never really pushed it, and we had to push him into it. Right. He didn't really volunteer. Yeah. There was a guy I called him on the phone and said, "Eddie, we need somebody to put on the ballot because Tony Bills is not able. He is he's declined it because of his health, yeah. and he was the only one that year that was nominated for president the yeah. next year. Yeah. So we got him in the. Uh, Les Bowling, they both volunteered to go on the ballot. We told them we'd help either one of them, yep. and Eddie has did an outstanding yeah. job. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you, you mentioned Tony. Uh, it was kind of a moving moment in the, uh, in the meeting this morning, and just a lot of people affected. There's a, when they, you guys were doing the moment of silence for all those fallen, uh, two ones that I, I'm familiar with quite a bit is Tony and uh, Becky Church, but, man, there was a lot of people that are, have passed away over the past few years that this this breed is missing not just this breed there's a lot of people in, yeah. in coon hounds and and hounds period that have passed away so that was a that was a super cool moment and i won't i won't soon forget that that was that was really neat so well let's uh we're, we're kind of going to end it up here with just talking about 
maybe that gets the biggest news is where this event's going next year. But before that, if if a club's interested in hosting this event, what does it take to what does it take to host plot days? What does a a club needs to obviously have uh, some place for uh, the field events? That's very important. Yes. Yes, I, I, myself, I wouldn't even want to talk to anyone if they didn't have a place for us to have a water race yeah. and a field trial. And I don't even own field trials and water race dogs, but it is a part of our breed. We love it. So we want to play all the games. Uh, camping. Ain't, <laughs> sir? Camping is a big deal. Camping is a big deal. You would not believe the people that's up here at Florida this year that's camping. Uh because that is a problem at a lot of places, and we've been camping for years coming to plot days. I'm having a facility. Uh, a lot of people has rented place, and then it'd be affordable. Yeah. I mean, that might sound, but it has to be affordable because you've only got some. This is a volunteer thing, and everybody ain't just throwing money everywhere, but you got to have a good place. you got to have a, I would say in today's world, you need to be lined up with about 20 guides to hunt at night and probably won't need half of them. But you need to have that kind of mind concept. You need to have woods for us all to go to. Uh, you need to have pavilions and stuff set up out here that we'll be able to set our bench show benches up where we can have our shows and stuff in shade. Shade is a wonderful thing. Especially so this time of year. If you've got ag centers or fairgrounds, it's got good shade and camper cooks ups. Camping, water, there's it, it ain't ever just place that can do it. But uh that's what we have need of. Yeah. So, uh, so I guess without further ado, you guys uh, uh, stay in the same weekend next year. Is that right? It's going to be June uh, 13th through 15th. Next year. And where are you guys heading to? Lower Illinois. We're coming back here. Coming back to Florida, Illinois. Yeah. Charlie Brown Park. Yes. All Third. that coon dog history. <laughs> Let me say one other thing. Yeah, absolutely. Lloyd Ledman yeah. has helped this association. He is the go-to person here at Florida. Yeah. And he has helped this association more than anybody knows. Yeah, absolutely. Well, hey, yeah, there we go. If you guys have any, you guys want to say anything else on behalf of MPHA to anybody who may be listening out there? Get on our web page. If you, if you want to learn more about the Plot Hounds, get on our web page. We are, we are, we're a family-oriented group. We want our kids to come to Plot Days and hang out and have a good time. There's something for everyone here, so make plans. Third weekend in June next year, Florida, Illinois. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. Hope you guys enjoyed that interview with Eddie and Gary. That's almost impossible at plot days to try to find a time where everybody's not running around doing something, so I had to just pull them away from their duties for a minute and carve out uh, 15 or 20 minutes hey gary has always been that guy and i'm sure uh he was that way he's always like this he's always on go 100 miles an hour all the time yeah. always working yeah there's always something to be done and yeah. he, he's always he's always busy that's he for sure. served he served a, a lot of the different uh positions there in the plot association one of them being the president you know but it doesn't really matter what even when i think even when he wasn't an officer he's still helping somewhere absolutely absolutely um, well, hey, let's shift gears a little bit. Uh, we've kind of talked about it a little bit, but there on uh, May 31st was the end of our Spotlight Series, Next Generation Spotlight Series. Uh, we have our final standings in. We've kind of made it public to everybody, so we might as well shout out some of the the, the youth that uh, achieved great things this past year and talk about what they did. Um, so this is the Next Generation Spotlight Series 2022-2023 winners. Uh, this, this series is uh, brought to you by Bright Eyes, they're a key sponsor in this, the, the presenting spon sponsor for this series. And we're going to get started with our Senior Division Night Hunt. Um, and the winner this year was uh, actually our 2022 Youth National Senior Division Champion, uh, Jolin Beachy. And Jolin is from Baltic, Ohio. Um, he actually uh, aged out in the middle of the, or not in the middle, but somewhere in the, in the year. He turned 18 on December 15th, but all of his cast wins happened before that date. Um, he ended up with 60 total points with three cast wins. Um, he was a cast winner at the 2022 Ohio State Youth Championship, and he had double cast wins at Youth Nationals last year uh, in my Dino, Ohio. He got ninth place on Friday, ninth place on Saturday, and ended up bringing home the final cast. Yeah, you mentioned turn 18 on in December, you know, so the last, the last good better than third of the season, he wasn't able to compete because he aged out, but those points held up for him, and that's kind of surprising, really, but... Yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, as I understand, if I remember right, the youth nationals is actually his first 
event was it not handling a dog yeah that's right i had a, i got a chance to interview him there after the event um and it was one of his first handling gigs he did the ohio state championship it was either the weekend before or two weekends before um joe yoder who who owned the dog uh that he was hunting that weekend had reached out to him about handling and he was all for it and he had a pretty good uh two or three week stretch there and uh and it was enough to win the spotlight series. Yeah. So how many kids go out in their first year and do <laughs> as well as he had wins youth nationals and it comes back and is a spotlight series winner too. Pretty amazing. Yeah. He did a good job. Hopefully he sticks with it. Yeah. I'd like to see him uh, uh, in the winter circle some more. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to go through the top five in each of these divisions and give each kid their, their due. Um, and we have a few here tied for second in the senior division of the night hunt. Uh, the first one's going to be Brody Bailey. Uh, Brody's 13 and he's from Mooresboro, uh, North Carolina. He ended up with 50 cast or 50 points this win from four different cast wins. Uh, the notable one I put on here, second place at the 2023 North Carolina State Youth Championship. Yeah, these some of these younger kids are ones that I don't know, yeah. not having been around as much as you have the last couple of years, you know. But uh, um, yeah, North Carolina kid there did very well. Uh, yeah, just when, 10 points behind the behind the overall winner, 50 points. One thing we know for sure, that North Carolina State U Championship is always competitive. They always put a lot of effort into it. Probably had a good number of entries, so getting second place there is nothing to sneeze at. Absolutely. North Carolina has always been strong as far as their youth programs in the state. Uh, the next one here, tied for second, uh, Clementine Slattery of Spring City, Tennessee. Keep talking about these uh, Slattery folks from down there in Spring City. They've really made in some noise here the past couple of yeah, years. Yeah, now there's a kid I did meet at Winter Classic this last year. Absolutely. A young lady there, and she actually had a couple of cast wins at the Winter Classic with the adults, I think. Wasn't it two, That's at least one or maybe two cast wins? Yeah, she placed, I think, fifth uh, in champion on Friday or Saturday night. I, I would have to pull out the results to see, but yeah, she's... Yeah, I remember one well. of the guys, an adult, you know, came and told me, he said, man, she had a really nice dog and her dog put on a clinic the night he drew her. I think it was the first night, Friday night, there at the Winter Classics. Yeah. And said she did a nice job. Yeah, absolutely. Well, hey, Clementine, is she's 16 years old and she ended up having 50 points as well, tied with Brody there, like we said. She did her, she got her 50 points from three different cast wins. Uh, she got fourth place at the 2022 Tennessee State Youth Championship. And she actually won the whole shebang down in Georgia in 2022 at the Georgia State Youth Championship. Yeah. Um, we have three dog, three uh, handlers here tied for fourth. Uh, one's going to be a name that we've talked a lot about a few times on this podcast already, and that's Miss Hannah Cable from Cleves, Ohio. Hannah's 16 years old, and she ended with 40 points with four cast wins. And she got those uh, four cast wins at four different YEP events. Um, in the state of Ohio and, and Ohio, I know that you probably, uh, it's kind of a newer thing they're doing it called the Ohio young gun series, U series, uh, where they're keeping tabs of certain yep events in the state. And it's really one thing it's done is it made a, a more clubs in Ohio, uh, schedule more yep events. And it's given kids a reason to go to the different yep events and try to accrue points for, for a big banquet they do in March of the next year, um, where you can get points. They also have a big event there and you get prizes and it's a, it's a good deal. Yeah, and Hannah has been right in the mix of all those competitions for the last several years. She is, uh, you know, she's made a name for herself here in the last several years in the youth program. She's kind of, she has kind of a famous brother, Kevin Cable, yep. who's uh, uh, anybody that knows night hunts has heard the name Kevin Cable, and her little, her little nephew is also becoming pretty famous, little Jackson. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. And she's kind of carved out her own yeah. piece of it and is yeah. competing and, and doing really well. Now, you know, Kevin, he's a walker man, and I'm not sure what Jackson's going to be. He handles a blue tick, but uh, uh, Hannah, she has handled a plot a lot. Yeah. So um, uh, they've kind of got all the breeds covered in that family. I guess. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, she's a great handler too. absolutely you is. watch her handle dogs it's amazing how some of these young kids and anna's one of those just she can outdo a lot of the the adults you know handling dogs yeah we talk about it a lot but seeing how she's progressed from 12 13 to now that she's mm -hmm. 16 years old wow she's put in a lot of effort yeah. and it, it can definitely you can definitely tell by watching her um also tied for fourth is tyler chastain of carnesville georgia tyler's 14 and he ended with 40 points this uh, this season, uh, two cast wins. He had double cast wins at the Youth Nationals last year. Uh, he got first place on Friday night, had a pretty good score, and then 11th on Saturday, made it to the final cast and came up a little short, but still a good showing for Tyler Chastain. Yeah, Tyler is the little brother of Drake Chastain. Drake did a lot of winning back in the day, and I think he, he won at least two and maybe three scholarships through the Youth uh, Nationals program. Uh, but has had good dogs. And I remember Drake was always kind of the, he kind of shadowed Drake or uh, kind of shadowed his uh, big brother there, you, you know, at all those events. But 
really cool now to see him doing well also. Absolutely. And I know Drake really kind of took him under his wing and kind of pushing him to, you know, the hunt. He's a quiet kid, very respectful kid, and all those kids were. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, congratulations to Tyler. Yeah. And then also uh, our last one here we're going to talk about in the senior division night hunt portion of the Spotlight Series is Dixie Manns from Hart, West Virgi- Hart's West Virginia. Uh, Dixie's 14, and she got 40 points also in the qualif- in the in the series year. Um, and her two cast wins, she was a cast winner at 2022 Youth Nationals, uh, getting 10th place on Friday night. And then she was also crowned the 2022 Senior Division Ohio State Youth Champion. Yeah, Dixie is, uh, man, what a family there. Chad Manns, we know him from, he comes to all of sports, all of our uh, events. We always see him at all of our big events, Autumn Oaks, the World Championship. A couple of years ago, her dad had a, world, a dog in the World Finals. It was the runner-up, actually. But those kids... Uh, they hunt a lot, they bear hunt, they coon hunt, and not just that, but they're very active in school sports. They uh, race bikes, I think, uh, motor motorcycles, I think, and things like that. So they're a very active family. Yeah. Makes me tired to watch all the videos <laughs> that they have out there. That's right. <laughs> but good for them. They're just, uh, they're, you know, they talk about uh, young kids this age, you know, sitting in the house and on video games. I guarantee these kids aren't one of those. That's they're right. out there learning things and getting dirty and and doing well with their dogs. Yep. Congratulations right. to Dixie. Well, hey, let's let's stay on the same uh, night hunt topic here, but we're going to move to the junior division now. So that's for f- the kids that are 5 to 12. And our, our winner of the Junior Division Night Hunt Spotlight Series is Bryson Rhodes of Se- Ripley, West Virginia. Seven years old. Just a youngster. <laughs> oh, um, he, uh, Bryson had uh, three cast wins this year that totaled to 50 points. Uh, he was a 2022 Junior Division Ohio State Youth Champion. So him and Dixie cleaned that up, sounds like. And then he was also a cast winner at the 2023 West Virginia State Youth Championship. So a great year for the seven-year-old Bryson and a bright future for that kid. Yeah, no kidding. There again, there's a kid that I don't, don't know, I guess, you know, but I'm sure hopefully we'll get to meet him here uh, someday. But, yeah, good job, Bryson. Yeah. Very um, well done. He's he's from not very far from where one of our field reps, Jamie Estep, is from, and I think he handles a blue tick, and they always, you know, they have a good time ribbing each other about him getting the pictures with the blue tick. But uh, it's going to be at Youth Nationals. Jamie's going to be our master of hounds at Youth Nationals, and he said that if Bryson ends up winning, he's getting in the picture, and he's getting, he's going to hold the head because he says Bryson always makes him hold the tail. <laughs> yeah. but good stuff. Yeah. Um, if we got a couple here tied for second, actually a, a handful of them here tied for second to, to finalize our top five here, but uh, they all have 40 points. Uh, the first one here is Macy Dunlap. Macy's from North Carolina. Uh, we don't have a junior handler enrollment form for Macy currently, so I'm not sure exactly where in North Carolina uh, but she's nine years old. Uh, she has 40 points currently, and she got that off four cast wins, including one just here recently at Black and Tan Days in uh, Mount Gilead, Ohio. She got third place on Saturday night in their youth championship. Uh, great job by Macy. Yeah, heck yeah. yeah. Also tied for second here is going to be Zelia Ely of Boyers, Pennsylvania. Uh, Zelia is 11 years old, and she also had uh, 40 points off a double cast win at Youth Nationals last year. She got fourth on Friday and 12th on Saturday. Yeah, the Ely's is a name I remember when I first started here at UKC in the first ever youth nationals. They were very, they had a couple of young kids, and I'd say her dad was probably one of them. If it's Tim, is it, it is. Tim? Is it yes. Tim? Okay. That's correct. And he was one of them. Him, Tim and his sister uh, were very involved, and their mom and dad, you know, took them and supported all our youth events and everything. So, yeah, this is one of the grandkids now. Yeah. Pretty cool. That is very cool. Yeah. Um, also tied for second here is going to be Travis Wrights of Ohio. Also one that we don't have a junior handler form on him. So uh, if you guys hear this and then you want to reach out to the hunting ops department, we can get your information. That way we make sure that you get your spotlight series points accrued correctly. Now that we've gone to a kind of a automated system through our, uh, through our system, online system, that'll help us out tremendously. So that's yeah, really, it's really an important thing. We really need that. Yeah. And uh, Travis is 12 years old. Uh, he also had 40 points off of a double cast win at Youth Nationals. Uh, he got seventh place on Friday and 10th place on Saturday for the total of 40 points. Moving on to our last one here, and this is going to be our 2022 UKC Junior Division National Champion from last year's Youth Nationals. So that's Colton Shockley from Crooksville, Ohio. Uh, Colton's nine years old. And like I said, he got 40 points, and both of those came from Youth Nationals last year. He got eighth place on Friday. First place on Saturday, and that was enough to win the whole junior division. Yeah, well, congratulations to Colton there. But, uh, you know, the one thing that I noticed with this, uh, I forget the year that we started this program, but the the, the ending points have been so consistent. It's it's uh, throughout all these years, really. And here again this year, 
you know, right up in there, 50, 60, 70 points to, yeah. to win the, to win either one. So it's, it's just been consistent throughout. It seems like very, it's, it's very attainable. Yeah. Yeah, it absolutely. Is. Colton, his, his dad, uh, Cody Shockley was actually just at our TOC finals and we call him the A Sandler. Hopefully he'll be able to make it down to Elizabeth down this, this July to is try he, to. Is he the one that hunts the English dog? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. So what is that dog's name that they win a Boomer? lot? Boomer. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And if yeah, you yeah. go back and look at the picture, a uh, little. Colton is so much smaller than Boomer. His Boomer's a pretty good yeah. size hound, and yeah, he, yeah. he gets kind of swallowed whole by Boomer in those pictures. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, now that you mention that, I know I've seen that picture you're talking about. <laughs> well, let, hey, let's move on to the senior division uh, bench show. Um, this is always a really competitive division. I think over the past couple of years, the point totals in this one is one that we've really seen just grow and grow as, yeah, this is, it's very competitive. It's, it, it it means a lot to the, to these folks that are running in this. And this year's winner is Abby Weber of Gloucester, Ohio. Uh, Abby's 16 years old, and this year she finished with 420 points. Wow, that is just amazing. Abby's been around since the for a long time, or since I for a good while, like not since not forever, I guess, or since I've right. been here, but for a good number of years now, and has always been a good little handler, you know. And now he's growing, 16 years old now, but yeah, good for her. Yeah, wins it. Yeah, so so her 20, 420 points, she was able to get 31 category wins during the year that counted towards the total. Um, and like we'll talk about in a little bit when we talk about next year's Spotlight Series and some of the rules and uh, that's, that's just get people category ready. category winners than, uh, I don't know, any adults even get that many. <laughs> right, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a and, lot. And what I was going to say is she probably had more category wins than that. They just didn't count towards the total oh. because you can only count two category wins right. per show. Yeah. So she probably had – you know, five, six, seven more than, yeah. than we we're actually talking about yeah. here. But uh, what a showing by Abby there. But let, I'm just going to name some of them off real quick. I know we got a whole list here, uh, but she deserves her credit for where she all she's been and what all she's achieved this year. Um, double category winner at 2022 Pennsylvania State Youth Championship. She was the king and queen of show at the 2022 Ohio State Youth Championship. Double category winner at the 2022 Tennessee State Youth. Uh, the reserve champion at the 2023 Grand American Youth Show. That's always a very competitive show. Uh, double category winner at the 2023 Ohio Young Gun Series Banquet. Double category winner at the 2020, uh, 2023 Virginia State Youth Championship. The 2023 North Carolina State Youth Championship. She was a category winner at the 2023 West Virginia State Youth Championship. And on top of all those state championships and Grand American and these major events, she also had at least one category win at nine other YEP events. Uh, mostly in West Virginia and Ohio, and uh, I think one or two in Indiana. Yeah, some of those first ones that you mentioned, there, those are no gimmies. I can guarantee you that. Those are pretty competitive with some, uh, you know, she's competing against some other kids like Hannah Cable and some other kids that are very capable and always have nice dogs. So, yeah, yeah that's pretty amazing. Nice job for Abby this year. Yeah, don't let and that. deserve the win. Don't let the state youth championship, don't let that one word deceive you. Those – Bench shows are oftentimes as competitive, if not more competitive, with the quality yeah. of dog yeah. than just a, a regular state yeah. championship. Incredible. Uh, second one, another young lady that's been mentioned on this podcast multiple times, and we know that she's a faithful listener. So uh, here we go. Jordan Brooks of Pounding Mill, Virginia. Uh, Jordan turned 13 during the year. She's, she started out in the junior division, but when she turned 13, she moved up to the senior division. Um, we got more notes about that to come. Uh, when we talk about next year's series, so we did make a we made a slight change to that. But uh, Jordan this year, she accrued 200 points off of 16 different category wins. Yeah. So what you're saying, she actually started in the junior division. Once she turned uh, 13, she had to now compete in the her points transferred to the senior division. That's right. She yeah. actually turned 13 in April. Yeah. So she was uh, for most of the year she was 12 years old, but uh, because of the way her birthday felt, she she was in there with the seniors. Right. Uh, so 200 points off of 16 category wins. Uh, some of her notable wins, she was an age winner at <laughs> that Youth That just amazes me, you know, Abby. But then here's Jordan, who's even younger still, you know. And yeah. Man, that many category wins, that's just uh, crazy. To be third, you would never know she's 13 years old when you see her out there show and she's yeah. like a seasoned vet out there. Yeah. But yeah, age winner at 2022 Youth Nationals, a double category winner and overall show winner at the 2023 North Carolina State Youth and she also won the uh, overall at 2023 West Virginia State Youth Championship. Uh, so congratulations to Jordan. What a year. And I'm sure she's got a proud mama, too. <laughs> 
And we got a couple tied for third here. We got three tied for third place here with 140 points. Um, the first one is one that we've already mentioned already in the hunt portion of it. She also placed in the show portion of it, and that is Hannah Cable of Cleves, Ohio. Uh, again, Hannah's 16 years old, and she had 140 points this year off of 12 category wins that were able to be counted towards this series. Um, some of her notable wins, she won her age group at the Youth Nationals, overall show winner at the Kentucky State Youth Championship, category winner at the Ohio Young Gun Series Banquet, and she was a double category winner and the overall show winner at the 2023 uh, National Playhome Association Youth Championship. Yeah, a little bit ago when we were talking about her, I was talking about how good a handler is. I was actually referring to her bench handling skills, you know, but that was actually the night hunt we were talking about. But it's good to see somebody like her that has, you know, skills in both. She's not afraid to get out there in the dark and, and, and hunt with her dog and call her dog and all that stuff. So, yeah, but yeah, great handler. Yeah. I was kind of, she was handling some different dogs in hunts and the show for Bill Schinninger at Plot Days when I was there this past weekend. And yeah. I was kind of joking around with him. You know, she she kind of got her teeth, you know, cut her teeth with the Gambler dog, which yeah. is a, a plot, almost uh-huh. a grand champion Hall of Fame plot dog. But recently you see her uh, posting pictures of some Walker puppies that she had. And I said, Bill's trying to keep, make sure that she stays in the breed. <laughs> yeah. Don't let her get away. Yeah. These are the kind of people you have to have in your breed to, yeah. Yeah. to bring you into the next next few years here. Uh, the next one here we have tied for third is Libby Ann Lancaster from Memphis, Nebraska. Uh, Libby also turned 13 during the qualifying year. She turned 13 in March and moved up to the senior division. Um, and she was able to get 140 points this year off of eight category wins we were able to count. Um, a lot of her points came at major uh, major events, talking about state-level uh, youth shows, uh, including double category wins at Iowa, Kansas, and Nebraska State yeah. Youth Championships. Hey, good for her. You know, and she, being from Nebraska, you might think that she might not have as many opportunities as somebody does maybe further east, like in the Tennessee, West Virginia, and those in those areas as far as youth events. But uh, look here, she's she had uh, – there's enough for her to uh, place here in the top five. She yeah. had a great year in – and uh, just an example of uh, that is possible. Yeah, absolutely. And she's also one that uh, you see all the time her dad, Charles, posting pictures of her at uh, confirmation shows. So they they do both. They have some good dogs and they travel a lot. And yeah. uh, they've, they're have uh, they also, she's going to be a great handler because of, of the situations that she's been put into and, and how well she's adapted and, and how much she's grown over the past couple of years. Become a really good handler. And uh, the last one tied for third here in the senior division of the bench show is Haley Lewis of White Pine, Tennessee. Uh, for the third time here, we're mentioning a 13-year-old girl. So uh, she turned 13 in October and had to move up. So uh, this just means that for the next few years, the uh, senior division of the uh, bench show is going to be a dog fight between some of these gals, and I think. It's, it's always been strong, and it's it's not letting up. It's yeah. probably just, it probably just keeps getting stronger, I feel like. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like uh, like the others, Haley had 140 points off of 11 category wins. Uh, she was a category winner at the 2022 Kentucky State Youth Championship, a uh, category winner at Southeastern Tree and Walker Days Youth Show, a uh, category winner at a couple of the BBCHA spring, uh, spring Roundup Youth Shows that they do, and a double category winner at the Tennessee State Youth Championship. So strong year for Haley. Congratulations to all of the senior uh, winners there. Yeah, well, if you were thinking that when we got down to the junior division that it would be uh, a different when we got to the point total aspect of it and, and the competitiveness, you would have been wrong. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> uh, let's talk a little bit about the junior division Ben show winner here first, uh, Paisley Warner of Beverly, West Virginia. Nine-year-old again. Just a, a nine-year-old uh, little handler here who was able to earn 290 points off of 22 category wins. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, she had uh, quite the year uh, starting out with double ca- t- double category wins and uh, overall show winner at the 2022 Pennsylvania State Youth Championship. She won her age at Youth Nationals, double category winner at the Kentucky State, at the MPHA Youth Championship. She won her category at Ohio Young Gun Series, Virginia State Youth Championship, West Virginia State Youth Championship. And I just I put on here uh, that she's won at least one category at seven different YEP events, and six of those were in the state of West Virginia. Now, almost a year to the day, uh, back on June twenty second of last year, we made a uh, we made our second ever episode of this podcast. We talked about uh, our youth programs. We talked about I remember that series. one. Talked about youth nationals. Yep. We talked about YEP events. We talked about how they're free to clubs. There's really no reason not to have your one YEP event a year. It's free of charge. Keeps the youth involved. Um, and when, I'm gonna mention him again. Jamie Estep, over who's one of our field reps over in West Virginia. He's also the president of the West Virginia State Association. And he kind of challenged his state to become more active in the youth. He's a big proponent of youth. You could tell that by his son, Drew, who was at all the youth nationals mm-hmm. and 
participated and won the spotlight series. He's won youth nationals. And um, after uh, it seems like uh, all the clubs in West Virginia have been calling and getting an extra date or making one of their dates a youth event. And when you see a bunch of kids on here from the state of West Virginia, it goes to show you that a little bit of effort Mm -hmm. uh, can go a long way. Sure does. And it gives these kids a platform to go compete in the, and after we wrap this up, I do have a comment I want to make about that. Yeah. All right. So let's go to second place here. This is Miss Leah Penny of Beulahville, North Carolina. Uh, Leah is 12 years old, and she ended the season with 100 points off of nine different category wins. Um, she was a category winner at the 2023 Virginia State Youth Championship, and she also earned points at four different YEP events in the state of North Carolina. Third place is going to be Autumn Garner. Uh, anyone out there who knows Autumn or uh, – uh, maybe her uh, father, don't, mother, or uh, we don't know where she. We guardian. don't have we don't have a junior handler for him, so I don't know where she's from. I do know that she's eight years old, and she ended the season with ninety total points at nine category wins, and she did that at uh, Yep events in Alabama and Tennessee. So I'm guessing she's somewhere on the line there. But nine category wins at eight years old, very good for Autumn. Um, here comes uh, little Jackson Cable, uh, just six years old, It'd be the youngest one on this list from Connersville, Indiana. Ended up fourth place with 80 total points, uh, six category wins this past year. Yeah, I don't think any of those were with Slinky, I don't think. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hope yeah. not. <laughs> well, I can tell you the one at Youth Nationals wasn't with Slinky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he won He won actually the five-year-old division at 2022 Youth Nationals, and he was a category winner just recently at the Indiana State Youth Championship with uh, with Kevin, his, his father's uh, breaking the bank young mm. dog. Mm. Uh, so. We just saw him here last week over here at the premier dog show over here with his mom over here. He's having fun. He just loves dogs and dog stuff. You can tell. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, kind of rounding out our top five here, we have three three uh, kids here tied with uh, 70 points each. The first is going to be Lily Canoose of Shikshini, Pennsylvania. It's kind of a different name. <laughs> it is a different name. <laughs> uh, kind of like Punks Atani. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, Lily is 12 years old, uh, 70 points this past year with four category wins. She's a category winner at the Pennsylvania State Youth Championship and won two categories at the tw- at the Maryland State Youth Championship. So congratulations to Lily. Uh, also tied for fifth here is Ethan Faith. Uh, we don't have a uh, junior handler for him for Ethan either. Most of All of his wins came from Michigan, so I'm assuming that he's uh, from here in Michigan somewhere. But uh, if anyone knows Ethan, get in touch with us and we'll get uh, need some information for, about him. Um, Ethan is eight years old um, and ended the year with 70 points, uh, five category wins, including double category winner at the Michigan State Youth Championship. And rounding out our Spotlight Series standings, uh, this is the junior bench show division and also all of our winners uh, is going to be Katie Lewis. Uh, We just mentioned her sister just a minute ago, but this is Katie. She's 11 and she's from White Pine, Tennessee as well. And she was able to get 70 points from six different category wins. Um, including a category win at the Kentucky State Youth Championship, which is always a really competitive show, and uh, also four category wins over the entire weekend at the BBCHA Spring Roundup Youth Shows that they do. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Two sisters like that one finished out strong in the junior to senior division, the other one in the junior division. So congratulations to them and all the kids. You know, the, these these younger kids here in this group, uh, it's it's just pretty amazing. But the, the point I wanted to make, the remark I wanted to make, is I remember when I first started in the UKC, started the youth program, I think in 2000. And uh, it is just in doing that and all these YEP events and and all the breed associations getting on board and having a youth event, the same with all the state association having a youth event, uh, look what it's done now. And and it, it it's, it's I think that is the number one reason we have the, the Abby Webbers, the Jordan Brooks out there that are honing in on their skill or honing their skills and, uh, uh, you know, the Hannah cables and, and a lot of other kids that have already graduated from this, uh, from this program, you know, and it's, it's, uh, it's been well worth it. And it's, it's just the, the sport is just vibrant with great handlers and, and they're learning all these handling skills in the, in the shows and the hunts as well. So it's, it's been a good thing. The second thing is I feel like, I don't know how many, uh, youth event youth only events we have each year but we have a lot the last time i looked a couple of years we had over 200 and really for a kid that is uh a kid that really wants to just go to youth events if they really check the schedule and they want to uh you know might not be one just local local every weekend 
but they can get to one that is not too far away most most any time of the year. Absolutely. And that's pretty cool for a kid. And you know some of my favorite uh, episodes that we do have to do when we're talking about individual dogs or individual handlers, especially youth handlers and some of their accolades and what they've achieved and giving them other credit out here on the platform that everybody can hear about and getting uh, recognition in front of their peers. Some of my favorite ones to do. But talking about that, we're actually going to be doing our Spotlight Series Awards at Youth Nationals this year. It'll be on Saturday. And we'll do it right after the Youth uh, Youth Men's Show seminar while we're all still uh, together there. We'll go ahead and give out our awards to, to everyone. Uh, we actually backed it, up, we backed it up a little bit this year, the seminar and the show a little bit, to give some of the kids who may have been hunting the night before, let them get a little more rest before they get out there and play around all day and, and have to hunt the next night too. So, uh, look for our event ad. Uh, we're gonna at least we're gonna do we're gonna give our awards away to our top and for everybody on our top fives at least gonna get a certificate of achievement. Uh, that's gonna to be commemorate something new you're gonna do this year, and I think that's good. Yeah, yeah. Give them a little certificate at least something just for, uh, you know denoting their uh, their good year that they had. Absolutely. Alan, we both had Dr. Pathfinder twos now for a little while. What do you think about yours? I'm liking mine. One of the things I had the opportunity to now download a map of an area where I did not have service, and I've used it there, and it has worked flawlessly. I love it. Yeah, I love the crystal clear maps. I love that I never lose reception on my dog's collars anymore. Highly recommended by me as well. Dog Trip Pathfinder 2, the official GPS collar partner of UKC. So we mentioned it a couple episodes ago, but we're going to talk about it again. We've made a, a just a slight change to our Next Generation Spotlight series, a couple slight changes, I guess, as we've kind of automated the the system and taken out the human element of it. We used to do it through a spreadsheet. We're now doing our programs doing it for us as we're inputting uh, results from your reports that you send in. Um, so we're going to talk about that a little bit. But, hey, let's first off give some special thanks. Uh, the Youth Spotlight Series, not only the Youth Spotlight Series, but Youth Nationals as a whole, um, is made way better by the the contribution of Ray Conrad with Bright Eyes Lights. Yeah, it sure is. He got on board early on with this whole thing, and he's just been a strong supporter of it. And in, not just for us, you know, for our programs, but in his area as well, you know. But, yeah, he gives us uh, 20 Bright Eyes Lights that you're going to give away at Youth Nationals, 10 placements for Friday night's hunt and 10 again for Saturday night's hunt. And then each one of these kids that we talked about, the first place winners in each in the in the series this last year, they're also going to get a new uh, light from Bright Eyes. Uh, one thing I want to mention that Ray's doing, he's good at promoting. You know, he's got great lights, but right now he is doing a a deal on um, on his lights to where if you buy one of his new heat seeker lights, he is going to pay your membership, your next due membership for uh, the Chartered Breed Association to which you belong. So if you're a current member, uh, he will just tag it on for next year. Yeah. So that's a pretty good deal. But those are just kind of the type of things that Ray does, and uh, and we really appreciate his sponsorship and his support of uh, all these uh, youth here. Yeah. Kind of thinking outside the box there and knocking yep. out two birds with one stone, getting sure. more people involved, yep. and and also getting a quality line. So can't beat that. Um, so let's let's talk about the next generation spotlight series a little bit more. Uh, we mentioned it a couple times already, but the new uh, junior handler enrollment form it is uh, it's a must have uh, filled out and to us. You only have to do it once uh, and to get it so that way we can process your wins in the system. Otherwise, you're just going to be on a spreadsheet of we need this form, um, and we'll try to keep it uh, public who we're who we're missing. We're uh, we're keeping a tally of a list of of ones that we don't have, and I'm gonna try to put it on our public forums or on our website so you can go check it. And maybe if you see somebody who, who needs to fill one out, it's super easy. Uh, there's a fillable PDF on our website. We can send them out. We have them at our major events. Super easy process. It, it is. And we, re like you said, we really need that because then we send the kid a little uh, card, a little membership card with their number on it. And it's going to have to do its, its re or, uh, uh, attach their birth date is what it is. And uh, it just makes it easier for us to compile all of our points, record all of our points. Very necessary thing. Been talking, like you said, we've been talking about this for the last six months, and and uh, now is we really need it now, so right. we can keep giving them all the points they deserve yeah. and that they earn. The new series yeah. started June first, so we're actually already yeah. processed yeah. multiple youth uh, reports at this at yeah. this time. So, so we talked a whole lot here about our winners from this last year, but let's tell folks here before we close out how the, how their kids or how kids can earn these Spotlight Series points. 
Yeah. So uh, if you're interested in the hunt portion of it, any youth only event in the year. So a YEP event, youth championship, obviously youth nationals, go to those events. Any plus point cast win you get at one of these youth only events, you get 10 points towards your yearly total. Um, same for category wins. And if you go to a YEP event, youth championship, and get a category win, meaning your best male show, best female show. show. You're talking about the show yeah. here. Now. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. Champion male or female or grand champion male, grand champion female, you get 10 points per category win. And then there's bonus points events as well. That's right. We also have what we call bonus points events, and this is when points are doubled. And that's going to be uh, one of two things, either youth nationals, which is a bonus point event where you get double the points, which means you get 20 points per cast win in the hunt, plus point cast win in the hunt, or per age class win in the show, which is a little bit different. Right. And then uh, also at your state youth championships. There's only one state youth championship per state, so make sure that you know what it is. We have a uh, championship series schedule on our website that you can go to and kind of see the tentative dates for those. Always double-check that against our web calendar, just throwing that out there. Yeah, and one of the reasons we made it state uh, – championships is so every kid wherever they are they have the same opportunities at these double points events. that's right in their own state and maybe their neighboring states or wherever they want to go but yeah that's right yeah so in the, and those are double points events that means you get 20 20 points per plus point cast win at a, at a youth state championship and you get 20 points per category win in the show at a youth state championship um, these youth events are available are available to participate in for any kid the age 15 to 17. If you're under five, you're not able to compete. The day you turn 18, you're no longer able to compete in the youth events. Yeah, you're not able to compete anymore, but the points you did earn, just like the kid that won, the Joel Beachy, he won this year. You know, he turned 18, and he, had, he couldn't earn any more points, but he still retained those points he earned while he was – before he was 18, and it, and it worked out for him. So, it's uh, yeah, it's the same here, but – uh, let's also talk about the change that we made that is going to go into effect, uh, that will be in effect now. And it has to do with the juniors uh, jumping up to a senior or not. Right. That is going to be different than it has been up to this point. Yeah. Well, hey, the reason for this change is because we're, we're in the we're in the a program now that required us to do it one way or the other. Right. So it, we had to decide whether on the first day of the series, your age, are you going to be in the younger age group the entire time or the older age group the entire time? And what we actually decided on is that you're going to be whatever age you are on June 1st of the qual of the qualifying year is going to be the is going to determine what age group you're in for the for the duration of that year's uh, series. So if you're 12 on June the 1st, if you're still 12 years old on that date, you are going to compete. Your points are going to be uh, compiled in the junior standings for that whole year. Yeah, doesn't matter if I turn 13 on June 3rd. Or if I turn 13 on May 25th, right? Doesn't matter. It matters the date, the how old I am on June 1st when the series first starts. Right now, but, just because now just because I'm I'm still having my points accrued and put towards the junior division standings, that doesn't mean that when I turn 13, I'm still competing against the juniors. At that point, I would start competing against the seniors. When when you by that you mean it like in the night hunt, right? It, we we uh, they uh, draw the junior kids draw. Uh, by themselves or in the one category and the senior kids draw out with the 13 to 17 year old. So what you're talking about is when this 12 year old, as soon as he, he's going to compete with the juniors until let's say he turns 13 on August the 1st, on August the 1st, he is now going to actually be competing with the senior kids in the, in the, in the hunts anyways. Uh, but his points will, or their points will still that they earn there will still be compiled in the junior side. That's the, right. In the point. Yeah, that's right. Just just so nobody's confused by that. Right. Hey, if you have questions, yeah. um, always uh, we have our, our Next Generation Spotlight Series rules on our website, but also just email or reach out to us in the hunting ops department. Ask for me, or if I'm not around, you can always ask for Alan. He can help you out too, and we can we can get you set out on the right course. But uh, I think it's going to be it's going to work out better for everyone. Uh, one thing we did want to mention real quick uh, with the Spotlight Series forums, you know, now with the junior handler forms, it makes it a lot easier to ensure that the kids are getting their points that they're due. But it is still important, and it, it teaches a good lesson for the youth because it's going to be this way as long as you're competing in events to always double-check the paperwork, make sure the event official has the correct information they need for you, and make sure that you get the points that you rightly deserve from your wins. It's a whole lot easier to get make sure it's taken care of there and that you get your points that you earned to do it there and just double-check, make sure, than it is a month later. That's right. So 
Hey, that's uh, that's kind of a wrap on our spotlight series stuff. I think we've covered the program pretty well. Um, if you have any questions about, like I say, reach out to us in the hunting office department, ask for me and we can talk about it a little bit. Um, if you're a club interested in hosting a YEP event, uh, get in touch with us. They're free for you. No yep. charge, no license fee, no recording fees. Uh, you're allowed one a year. It doesn't count against your seven that you're allowed a year. Um, so no reason not to have it. That's right. Thank you for listening to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast. Be sure to give us a follow so you don't miss any of our new episodes or content.